Okay, welcome back everybody to our second lecture on uh, Christian apologetics. There's a question here in the chat uh, from Jacqueline. Uh, I heard Darwin himself made a journal and accepted that his theory was wrong and it was very difficult for him to come to terms with his own knowledge and discovery uh, is a wasted one. Is this true? It's just that it was, and that it was not published. Um, yeah, Jack, Jack and I have um, uh, no way to verify this. Uh, I, I, you know, um, I haven't necessarily seen a confirmed source as yet. Uh, maybe it's there, maybe it's not there. I haven't necessarily searched for that. So I, I don't know. Uh, but I have heard, you know, people make these statements, but uh, I'm sorry, I can't say for sure. Maybe you'll have to research that and find out if you know, that's exactly what he said or if there's a reliable source for it. Uh, we need to check on that. Yeah. All right, any other questions? All right. Um, let's go to our next lesson. We are now going to change our topic. So we've kind of, uh, we're leaving this whole topic of um, creation, creator, existence of God behind. Now, next topic is on the Bible. Right? So we as Christians, we have many times we say Bible says, Bible says, Bible says. Okay. So if you talk to an atheist, you talk to a non-Christian, why you how you know Bible is correct? You're saying everything Bible says, Bible says, Bible says. It's <laughs> fine. Why? How do you know Bible is reliable? Um, how do you know it's correct? You know. Uh, sometimes some people think, oh, no, no, somebody sat and wrote something. Somebody sat and wrote something, you're reading it, you're believing it. Uh, how do you know this is correct? Right? So that's the first thing. Then they would even ask us, uh, why are there so many different versions of the Bible? You know, if there's only one Bible, why well, you have so many versions? I mean, especially in English. Uh, we can understand if there's different language translations because people will have to read it in their, their own language. That is understandable. But in English, you have so many versions. Well, why do you need so many versions? Does it mean you have so many different Bibles? So that's a big quest, confusing question. So we need to um, uh, just look at that. And one is for our own benefit, that we ourselves should be very clear. And then we need to explain a little bit to somebody who asks, right? Uh, I'm not saying that you know um, every everybody's going to understand everything, but we share share a little bit, depending on how much they're willing to listen, how much they're willing to accept, right? So that's what we want to talk about in this uh, thing. And uh, you know, uh, how do you know? So the three important questions: Okay, um, how do you know only these 66 books are God's word? Why can't we add some more books, <laughs> some good writings, some good authors? Just add it. You know, why only these six to six? Right, we have to think about. It. Right. Um, a very important part of uh, our response is to also share about your own personal testimony. Right? How has the Bible helped you as you read it? Right. That it's not like reading the newspaper. Something is different. Newspaper, news, you'll read something. Okay, yeah, it's just information. Fine. But when you read the Bible, how the Bible has changed you. How the Bible has changed you, how it speaks to you today. Right? So that is a very important part that you can present. Just share with people. Hey, see, when I read the Bible, uh, God is speaking to me. My life is changed. Just leave that thought there because uh, the fact that what you're reading actually changes your life is a powerful testament. Right? 
as compared to reading some storybook. You read a storybook, it makes you feel happy, and you leave it. Or you read some news. But this book is changing. It's motivating. It's, it's transforming. So you just put that thought out there. That's important. Now, you know, when we talk about the Bible, the Bible is the most loved, also most hated book. Some people have tried to completely destroy the Bible. You know, as, as far back as uh, 300 AD, just as soon as the Christian church started and they started having scriptures, somebody wanted to destroy the Bible, the Roman emperor there. Now, tried. It's around 1600s, Walter, the French writer, he said, oh, within 100 years, Bible will be gone. He is gone. Bible is still here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, it is it is stated that uh, the Bible Society bought his house, and in his house they were printing Bibles. <laughs> so you see how things worked out. So today nobody, hardly anybody knows Walter, but the Bible is everywhere. You know, all languages and all forms. It has grown. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I tried to validate it. I, I think it is true. Uh, that's you know, but like a hundred percent, I'm not sure. But I tried to check, and I, I felt it. There's information on that, so I included that. Yeah. So, what does the Bible claim for itself? Bottom of page 39, top of page 40. The Bible is saying it is given by inspiration of God. That means. Uh, Man wrote it, but God inspired it. Hmm? So people actually sat and wrote, of course. They wrote it in their language, um, uh, but God inspired it. So starting from Moses. Moses was born more than 2,000 uh, two, 2, years after creation. So how could he say, day one this happened, day two this happened? He was not even around. Well, one, God revealed. So he captured in his language what God was showing him. This is how everything began. First, by, first five books written by Moses. How did he know? Well, first God revealed. Second, there is also historical. That means uh, things that were passed down. Yeah. So Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, so on. These were passed down. So both there is inspiration, God revealing, and there is historical information that Moses recorded for us. Okay? And of course, from Exodus on, he's involved. He's there. He was there. I, I, he saw it. Okay. On. So, Scripture is given by inspiration. So you think about Apostle Paul. Almost every Sunday, we quote, you know, about when we are having Lord's Communion. We say, uh, Jesus said, take it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is my blood. Paul wrote, but Paul was not there. He was not sitting there. <laughs> How did he know Jesus said these words? Right? Paul said, the Lord revealed to me. Yeah? God revealed. So through revelation, he knew what happened there in the in that in that in the last supper these were the words jesus spoke and you know, he wrote it down so like that so much uh, so many things so so the scriptures were inspired were given by inspiration of god and then there is historical information which people communicated verbally or they communicated through writings they communicated so there's historical information as well So when we look at the scriptures, we know that it's on bottom of page, uh, what page is this, 14, um, that uh, the Old Testament was written mainly in Hebrew. A few portions were written in Aramaic uh, when they were taken into captivity, Daniel and Ezra. Uh, the New Testament was all written in Greek uh, uh, for during a period of 45 years. So 1,000 years plus 45 years, 66 books, uh, 40 different authors. Um, and we have this compilation of, of the Bible. Now, how did the Old Testament, on page 41, how did the Old Testament get written? 
So they, in those days, they used to write on uh, what paper that was also known as papyrus. Then they started writing it on leather leather scrolls, which were made into book form, or called codex. And uh, it is all handwritten. So there will these be bottom of page 41. You will see how a scribe will sit and write. You know, it was just meticulous, hard work, sitting and writing. Not easy for us like computer. Tuck, 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 delete. <laughs> we can do copy paste. Everything we can do. Uh, those days, everything had to be handwritten. If you make a mistake, start again. Right? It's not easy. Everything has to be carefully written. So it was hard work. But these were scribes. So scribes means they were dedicated for this work. Sit and copy. Sit and write. Very careful. Right? So this, so when one, the original was written, people would copy it, make copies, make copies. And the copies will go to different places or different people who could afford them or where they wanted it to be circulated. Right? So they spread throughout the Middle East. So copies were taken to different places uh, and preserved there. Now, on page 42, we just want to do a little comparison with ancient uh, text. Now, Plato, Plato was a Greek philosopher. So he was a philosopher about 300 years before Christ. Okay, 300 BC. Of course, not... Uh, you know, the Old Testament was written much before that. But we have, we're starting with Plato as a reference because we're saying, okay, here is a Greek philosopher. Sometimes people quote, take his quotes. They say Plato said, Socrates said. So we are talking about people who express their ideas about 2000 plus, 2000 more than 2,000 years ago. And people, oh, this is what Plato said. This is what Socrates said, like that. They quote. Fine. But what are you quoting? Where, you, where are we getting that information? So if you look at it, the number of manuscripts that, orig, you know, original old manuscripts that have their writings, are in these numbers, like 250 manuscripts, 250 or ancient manuscripts that have the right, uh, the, the, the teachings of, or the right ideas of Plato, old. And these manuscripts are about, are from uh, um, 9th to 13th century, 900 to um, um, 1,300 years, around that time. So that means earlier manuscripts have been lost. So, example, Plato's writing, he wrote it around 300, 400 BC. 400 years before Christ, BC. His ideas he wrote. Then, 400 years, so copies that were made those days lost. But, I mean, lost from our point of view. So there were copies made, copies made, copies made. And finally, around 1300 or 900 AD, some more copies were made. 1000 AD, 1001, 1100, 1200, 1300, copies were made. So, the earliest copies we have are from around 900 AD. Okay, the copies made before that are gone, destroyed. So that is called as a time gap. That means the time between earliest copy, uh, what we have, which is around 900 AD, to when the original would have been written. 
around 400 BC. Okay, that is called time gap. So there are two things we have to look at. How many manuscripts do you have of his works? And when is the earliest copy? And what is the time gap between the earliest copy we have and to when he would have actually written the thing, time gap? You understanding? How many copies of manuscript do we have? If you have more manuscripts, then you can check between the manuscripts. They're all saying the same thing. If every manuscript is saying something different, say, hey, <laughs> each one has written something else. It's not a copy of the original. But if all the manuscripts are saying something, the same thing, then you know, OK, this is the original text. That means they all copied the same thing. They, they, they're, it is correct. But if they're all saying something different, 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 yeah. So it happened. Um, see, so it happened both horizontally and linearly. That means over time. So, example, he would have written the first, say, let's say, first one was written 400 BC. That time, let's say, 10 people made copies. There were 10 copies. Example. Then, from each of the 10, around uh, 200 BC, let's say. Somebody made, from each of that, another 10 they made. So now you have about 110 copies. Then, say around uh, 100 AD, somebody made some more copies. You know? so, you, so the number of copies are increasing, but it is being made at different points in time. You know, if all these manuscripts are, 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 are uh, the text is the same, then you know the copies are correct. But if the text is different, then you know these people, either they didn't copy correctly or they're writing their own things. right? <laughs> that means something is wrong in the text. You can't depend on it. We can't say, yeah, this is what Plato said. Because it is not matching with other manuscripts. So something is corrupted. This is all about only five books. So we are, we, are, we, are, we are going to look at how about the Bible. But what we are doing is we are comparing with uh, different uh, ancient texts. Like how, you know, how many copies of those texts do we have? What is the time gap? And then how does the Bible compare to these two? Because these are two important criteria to show the reliability of a text. If you have a good number of manuscripts, and if we go as close to the original, then we say this is very reliable. Right? Uh, so that is what we are trying to do. Yeah. We are looking at number of manuscripts and time gap. Got it? So you'll see some other history books, like um, the Greek historians. There are only eight manuscripts that are there. Time gap is 1,300 years. That means the earliest we have is 1,300 years. Uh, Roman history, uh, other historical books. Yeah, I'm just given a list here so you get an idea. Um, even in Shakespeare's uh, plays, which is from around 1500, um, there are passages that are missing. There are passages which have many different versions. So you don't know like which is the actually what Shakespeare wrote. You don't know. We don't know. Uh, because somebody else wrote something. It's all got mixed up in certain texts. So we don't actually know the uh, original that Shakespeare would have written. Now, if you look at the Old Testament, see a little chart over there on page. Um, 43, uh, if you look at the Old Testament, Malachi, if you look at the last book, Malachi, right? So till Malachi, just imagine copies were made till Malachi. So you've got the entire Old Testament till Malachi written or copied by these scribes around 400 BC. So now, okay, just imagine. 
you've got the completed Old Testament, 400 BC, say copy was made. Now, what uh, until uh, 18, uh, 1947, the oldest known copies that of these Old Testament manuscripts, oldest copies that we had, was from 900 AD. That means we are saying 1,300 years gap. Okay, Malachi, last book, 400 AD BC. We had manuscripts that were written in 900 AD. They were written in 900 AD. That means they these, there's a big gap, time gap of 1,300 years between what the last book was written and what manuscripts we have. So that is fine. So King James, other books and all were translated from those manuscripts. Then what happened in 1947 is there was a shepherd boy in near the Qumran caves. He was taking care of his sheep. Suddenly some sheep went. So he went searching for his sheep. And he, the, she came into these caves called the Qumran caves near the Dead Sea. And there he saw jars safely kept inside the caves. Inside the jars were scrolls. This is 1947, not too long ago, around how old India is as a country. Hey, he saw these jars, the scrolls were there. Then, of course, this is a, a discovery. So people came, they looked at the scrolls. So they found in these scrolls, they found the entire Old Testament. Among other things, all put in jars, sealed, kept safely. And these scrolls were from, when were these scrolls from? One, if you go to page number 46, these scrolls were from 150 BC. That means they were written very close to Malachi. Malachi was 400 BC. These scrolls were from 150 BC to 70 AD, around that time they were written. Very close to Malachi. And they were sitting in these caves. Full Old Testament. I mean, in scrolls, put in jars. So now, remember, the oldest copy we had of the Old Testament was from 900 AD. Now we have found manuscripts from 150 BC, almost 1,000 years. So they compared the scrolls. Is it matching or not? And they found everything was matching. Small, maybe negligible difference. Copy is small. Otherwise, everything was matching. This is the book of Isaiah was same. That means, even though there was one 1,000 years, imagine you and I may live 70 years, 80 years, <laughs> 1,000 years gap. Even though there was 1,000 year gap, the manuscripts, the text in the manuscript remained almost unchanged. That shows how carefully these people were copying, making the copies. Right? So suddenly, the time gap became very small between the last book of the Old Testament, when the whole full Old Testament would have been compiled, to the earliest set of manuscripts, it dropped to about 250 years, very close. Whereas, like we said in the earlier table, some of the Greek philosophers, historians, the time gap is like 1,000 years, 1,300 years. But now, Old Testament time gap dropped to 250 years. You understand it? 
Now, of course, New Testament is a little bit more easier because it is more, it is more uh, recent. Um, and of, uh, let me also, let's just, bottom of page 46. We also, uh, you know, found uh, the Old Testament uh, manuscripts, copies of the Old Testament, which were made into Greek, from Hebrew, made into Greek around these times, around 325 AD to 400 AD. And these are uh, these different copies are in Greek, are uh, you know given different names to, based on where they are being kept. So we have the Greek version of the Old Testament. These are Greek translations or versions, Septuagint. The New Testament, more recent, so lots of manuscripts are available, right? Written in Greek, from Greek they were translated to Latin. And then they were also translated to other languages. So we have lots of manuscripts of the uh, New Testament. If you want to, if you want to summarize all of this, there's a table there on page 47. You look at that table and you look at the number of manuscripts. Look at the time gap. So Old Testament, we have more than 10,000 manuscripts. So many copies. Time gap is down to about 150 years. New Testament, 24,000. Time gap is about 50 years. That means if in terms of credibility of the text, the Bible is more reliable than some of all the other ancient books, which people quote nicely. So-and-so said this, so-and-so said that. But you're, you don't know. You're reading some manuscript thousand years later. We don't know if it's correct or not. For Bible, we say, hey, we are so close to the original. And uh, we have so many manuscripts. Everything is saying the same thing. We, we know this is what the correct text is. Uh, Prince. Uh, are you uh, speaking on the mic? Yeah. Go ahead. Regarding the Dead Sea Scrolls uh, that were found out and uh, we were told that uh, they are about 150 BC to 70 AD. And it's like how uh, we can say that, like, is there any proof? Because of the people who stored them. So this tribe uh, or this, this people who made copies, they were living at that time. So, example, if you say some tribe, uh, they were there, or uh, yes, group group of people, they were there at that time. They are the ones who made these copies. They are the ones who put it here and things. So we know when they 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 were living. So based on that, we can say that this is from that period of time. That's why you have a range, like one uh, uh, two fifty BC to seventy AD. That's when these people were living here. They were living in this part of the world. They made these copies and they put it for safety. They kept it here. They were here that time. So that's how we know it's from that time. And then, of course, you know, wars happen, things happen, people were destroyed, killed. But these things were preserved. Right. So that's how we know the date. <laughs> Like, any more? Uh, any more? <laughs> yeah, it, it's possible. I mean, I'm, uh, because in the news we keep reading, you know, somebody sometimes they will unearth a city, like they will disc they like, while they are digging for something else, they like excavate. Oh, there was a city here. Of course, they you know they find it, and then they start digging very carefully. They find okay. So in in that area of Palestine, Middle East, you know. Uh, so it is possible that uh, in that area, you know, as people are excavating, they're digging for various reasons. If they run into, hey, there was a city here, and you know, maybe somebody bought some <laughs> scrolls and preserved it somewhere, you know, those how they used to keep it in jars in those days, uh, we can still find. So possibility is there. Yeah, but this was the Dead Sea Scrolls was a very big thing, you know, especially to 
to show us that the text of the scriptures had not changed over time. So one more question about this translation. Like from the Old Testament, if you see, it's actually written in Hebrew. And then it was translated to Greek and then to English. Like I heard like from now, this this Old Testament from Hebrew is directly translated into English. Is it true? Yes. Yeah. So uh, actually many of the English translations, they work with these original manuscripts. So they will start from the Hebrew or they will start from the Greek. And they will translate it into English. So that's generally how all our translations are made. And they will, uh, we will explain, like, you know, depending on uh, the philosophy of how they want to go about doing the translation, we get different versions of the Bible. And we also have, you know, these footnotes that will say, this text is not found here and not found there. Why are they saying it? We will explain, right? Okay, that based on what set of manuscripts they want to use and how they're going about translating, uh, they make these comments. So I will come to that. Right? So, so when you compare the, the scriptures to you know, other Greek philosophers or so on, uh, the Bible is way ahead of other ancient texts. Now we have more manuscripts, time gap is smaller, therefore the manuscripts, the text in the manuscripts are more reliable. Right? So in a similar way, I mean, and I don't want to kind of, I mean, we're not here to like uh, make our, you know, what to say, put other religions down kind of, we're not here to criticize, but uh, we could, you know, talk about the Bible, uh, the text of the scriptures, uh, in comparison to, say, the Quran or the Vedas. You know, this, again, we're not doing, again, don't get into any argument with people on this, you know, see, our goal is not to put people down, hey, you know, what we should do is, um, if they ask us, why you believe the Bible, then we can give this answer. But don't say Bible is better than Quran or Veda. That is not our approach it is because it will offend people. Right? That we don't want. Right? But uh, at least we can say that uh, this is authentic. Uh, the scriptures are authentic, and uh, the the content is is inspired by God. It was written by man. We, we, we accept that. But the content was inspired by God. And we understand also that, that it has both revelation and history. Meaning, yeah, it is recording actual events. But it also has revelation, meaning insight that God gave to the people. So we accept. That's, that's how we present. But we don't argue with people on, oh, this is better, that is better. No, we'll give you information, you decide. Yeah. So we are just, uh, I mean, uh, uh, giving this proof because of this uh, number of manuscripts, the, I mean, maximum number of ma manuscripts. Manuscripts and uh, time gap. Yeah. So, and and when we, when we compare to this Vedas also, the people were telling, we also have manuscripts and all. I mean, what what your take on that? Yeah. So, um, so the Vedas, uh, at least from what I know, a lot of it was verbally transmitted, like you know, uh, orally transmitted. They call it, and uh, and then compiled, written down. Right. And so, yeah, uh, they they have. Uh, these manuscripts and so on. And um, again, we are not going to argue with, with that. So one is fine. Uh, um, we are just showing that the scriptures are authentic, are reliable, and uh, and they, they will have their position on the Quran or the Vedas. Now, of course, Quran, they will also argue, you know, it is, it is clean, it is written in Urdu and <laughs> Arabic and whatever, that it's all of those things, fine. 
and they will criticize us for having so many words and so on. Like that. So uh, we can respond to those arguments, but our goal is not to try to put any of their scriptures down. We accept that. Yeah, you have copies or you've maintained, the example, the Quran. You've maintained, you've kept it only on, I think only recently they started you know, allowing translations in English, but uh, it was always kept in the original text. So if you had to read Quran, you had to read it in the original language. So those those kinds of things are there which they can use as arguments. Uh, but we can present what we know and, and leave it at that. Yeah. The people who are converted from Brahmins uh, to Christians, they got to know Jesus. Uh, uh, when when these people became the preachers, they were telling like there is Jesus in Vedas. Like, is is there really Jesus in Vedas? I mean, I've also studied one one of the thing, and I've also got for the conclusion. I mean, the characteristics what they were explaining, it's actually uh, resembles Jesus in in the whole scriptures of Vedas. Can we can we mention? I mean, all these Veda things in our when we are preaching. We can use that, or no? is that so? I yeah. So you know, uh, I've heard both. Yeah, so like you like you're saying, uh, Hindus who have come to Christ, and also Muslims who, is, uh, who have come to Christ, uh, share that. In fact, I was listening to the testimony of one Muslim who was was he was actually a Imam, you know, and. He, when he was reading the scripture, his scriptures, he found that it was pointing to Jesus. Then he came and explored Jesus, and he came to Christ, and today he's a preacher. So these testimonies are, are very powerful. But, and so, so God has used that to bring them to faith in Christ. No doubt, no doubt. Same thing with, say, from the, from the people who have read the Vedas, and then from there they've explored the Christian faith, and then they've come to faith in Christ. No doubt that these testimonies are valid. They are preaching and serving the Lord today. But I would say we shouldn't personally go, uh, we shouldn't go and say, uh, see the Quran is pointing to Jesus and the Vedas is pointing. You know why? My, my thought is this, that if we say that, then the immediate question in the mind of the, the listener is, that means the rest of the scripture is also correct. If you're saying one part is correct, that it is correctly pointing to Jesus, then the rest of it also must be correct. Why you're telling only one verse or one part is correct, and I should disregard the others? Because that's a logical question. It's a very valid question. Correct? So it's very dangerous for us to use that as a basis. So that's when you say when you're comparing Bible with Quran and Vedas. Okay, we understand there are other script, scripture texts. We're not going to fight. We're just going to say this is how the Bible came to us. And we re realize, you know, there is the Quran, there are the Vedas. This is how the scriptures came. But we are not going to use that content of the Vedas, the content of the Quran to point to Jesus. Let God use that. I mean, as we see in these cases, these testimonies where People were reading the Quran and they found something that pointed to Jesus. And then they went and explored more about the Christian faith and came to faith in Christ, which is okay, which is good. God used that. But if we try to use it, then these will be the logical arguments. And then, you know, then it's pointless. So better not even to go into those things. Leave it alone. And I wouldn't use it, even though I know some people are, you know, do use it and, and the thing. friends, religious friends, like one pastor was saying, we can, I mean, to just God to know, like to just inspire them from the scriptures or to make them understand little more deeper, like we can use uh, the scriptures to point uh, to point to Jesus, to lead to Jesus. Yeah, see, so, um, Paul just used his, their culture, like so he saw what he observed. So he, he saw that they had this inscription to one one stone saying to the unknown God. So he used that 
saying, okay, about, I'm going to tell you about that unknown God. And he also quoted one of the poets, you know, as one of your poets have said, in him we live and move and have our being. But he was not validating the rest of anything, you know, any, well, you know he's not validating the rest of their culture. That, yeah, 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 you can worship many gods. No, no. He was very careful how he used it, like uh, something in their culture as a starting point, something in their literature uh, to get them to understand, you know, how we can have a relationship with God. But that was it. Yeah. Uh, so definitely we can use things that people are, are familiar with to present truth. But I think, you know, getting into this area of the Veda says, is talking about Jesus or the Quran is talking about Jesus. I think it's a dangerous area because the obvious question is, hey, that means the rest of the Vedas are correct and the rest of the Quran is correct and everything else is correct. Why are you telling us to disregard? So that that is a logical question and we can't uh, do that. Hmm. On the same way, this damage also happened to the other side. Right. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of damage. Prince, uh, you have a question? Uh, when we are speaking about even uh, Vedas and uh, Quran. Quran has the scriptures, man scriptures that were old, and uh, we were told, like, uh, we accept that. When they told, we accept that they have manuscripts, yes, which yes. are old. So, sir, is it not like uh, accepting also what they're believing is true? Like accepting their manuscripts were all reliable? Like, is it not accepting what they're believing is true? So, so we are not disregarding the man, you know, the fact that there are ancient, uh, I mean, that the Quran or the Vedas are. Uh, uh, not reliable texts. I mean, we're not we're not saying okay, that's that doesn't exist. Yeah, they they do exist. We respect that. But where the so then so one is we present the validity of the scriptures that this this is how we see that the scriptures our Bible is valid. The next major difference is the content. The the content of the scriptures is inspired by God. And that difference, they will see. They'll open their eyes and see. Now, um, for example, you compare the Bible with the Quran, with what Muhammad did. And so the Quran has part of Muhammad's life and all of that. So you compare, let them compare, let them see the difference. You know, and, and I've heard testimonies. I read a book, um, I forget the title. Uh, it, it was written by one Hamas leader. So the Palestinian thing, where he himself, you know, uh, he, he was of course raised up as a Muslim, and then when he, he was given a copy of the New Testament, and he started reading the New Testament, and he started reading the life of Jesus, and saying, hey, the life of Jesus is so different from that of Muhammad the prophet. So different, and that really touched him. Now that itself, just reading the Gospels, reading the life of Jesus, and the book name of the book I think is called Son of Hamas. He was a son of the one of the leader of this group, the uh, Palestinian group. So, just reading that the the lifestyle, uh, the the Gospels. Uh, sorry, it, it just shake, drew him to Christ, and he made a decision to follow Jesus. Of course, his life was at risk, and he had to leave. But what I'm saying is, uh, okay, I, I, in the natural level, yeah, we need to show that the Bible is valid, ancient text. We agree that there are other ancient texts. We're not disregarding it. But the next major difference is the content. What is in there? You read that, you read this. Let, let God work. Yeah. Or if they ask us questions, we can explain. Let's answer one question on the chat here. 
uh, is the Torah and the Bible are same? What's the difference between the Torah and the Bible? So, um, the first five books of the Old Testament uh, and uh, the the um, the books of Moses. So that's the same. So uh, you know, uh, in, in that to that extent, it's the same. And then, of course, the the Jews have other um, texts, uh, the, the Talmud, which is, I think, the the interpretation of the law. Uh, that means, how do you apply the law in everyday life? So that is not part of the text. Right? But the first five books of Moses are the same. Uh, uh, the Bible, of course, is much more than the first five books. Uh, But the first five books are the same. Okay. All right. Um, let's um, pause here for today. We will uh, pick this up next week. Uh, continue this. I will talk about the scriptures and um, get into other topics. Yeah. Okay. Somebody can close in prayer. The bill dismiss, please. Right, Brent. Jesus, we thank you for this uh, day and for this time that we can uh, come together to know of your word and also to see um, the perspectives of different people as well and to, uh, for us to know uh, which is the right doctrine and to follow it. And uh, Lord, I pray that uh, we would um, continue um, to go on the right path and to not go astray. And uh, thank you, Jesus, for this class. And uh, in your name we pray. Amen. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I will uh, pick this up next week. See you soon. Bye.